Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Miley here with the Hurricane Alligator discussion for September 12, 2021, recorded around 4 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for a strong tropical storm or even a low end hurricane to be impacting Texas over the next several days, and a look at a few more storms that may develop off the coast of Africa during the next several days. So let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we have newly christened tropical storm Nicholas down here. Uh, entering into the south central gulf of mexico bringing impacts already to portions of texas and louisiana we do have a tropical storm warning in effect for portions of texas a tropical wave here which is interacting with a broad upper level low and eventually with time this upper level low will be weakening and moving westward allowing for some organization and this has a 60 percent chance of development as it generally heads off towards the north and west we also have a new wave that is just now coming off the coast of Africa. This as well has a 60% chance as it moves generally towards the west-northwest into the central tropical Atlantic. So looking here at tropical storm, Nicholas again sustained winds right now are right around 40 miles per hour. And again, this is now a tropical storm. Uh, they were going to issue potential tropical cyclone advisories at 11 a.m. this morning, but instead this got quickly upgraded to a tropical storm. And we'll show why here in a moment. Again, the sustained winds of 40 miles per hour now, this is now moving towards the west-northwest like such and will be eventually taking a turn towards kind of the north and eventually northeast during the next several days, but also slowing down once it nears the coast and makes landfall here. Now, again, there's a considerable range of possibilities that are still out there from a storm that moves just kind of inland over portions of Mexico and into south central Texas to a storm that tracks a little bit more right of this deviation and makes landfall somewhere closer to the Louisiana Texas border here. And this is a possibility that is described very well by the National Hurricane Center. And this remains a possibility. Uh, currently, sustained winds are forecasted to be right around 65 miles per hour before landfall, although we cannot rule out a category one hurricane, a low end category one hurricane making landfall. Uh, somewhere around, along the Texas coastline here. Now, if we take a look here at the visible satellite imagery from right now, this is from tropicaltippets.com, and what we can tell is that the storm itself is still not relatively all that well organized. If we should actually take a look here, the low-level cloud features here seem to be suggesting a low-level circulation that is somewhere within this general vicinity which is away from the main cloud mass that is off here. And this is because we still have some southwesterly vertical wind shear aloft. And again, if we look here and take a look here at the zoomed out floater, what we can actually tell is that, again, we still have some of that uh, shear impacting the storm. And we can see this better in the water vapor satellite imagery. There is a broad upper level low that is sitting right here. And there is a little bit of shear beginning to take place over the southwest here. And this has actually been occurring during the last several days. However, this broad upper level low is backing westward with time and it's weakening as upper level lows typically do that's been sitting in an area for several days. And so the shear is actually now beginning to take a less of an effect now on Nicholas. And because of that, We've seen some general improvements today in the structure. Now, you can still tell that, again, we have enhanced outflow, especially on the northern side here. And that's in part because some of that southwest shear. And this is also now starting to get entangled within an upper level trough that is digging in from the north. And this trough is also creating that diffluent flow aloft, which is helping to break out shower and thunderstorm activity across this area. Now, the recon plane that's been in there today has kind of sampled this environment and confirms what we've seen on visible satellite, which is indeed that we have sort of multiple different areas of cyclonic spin here. The recon is mainly sampling this area now, but what was actually confirmed for uh, the initial advisory is this low level circulation down here. So there's been a considerable jump here. There's likely still these competing uh, surface centers at the moment. Now we do notice that again, there is tropical storm force winds, multiple multiple reliable flight level and surface winds over, four, uh, over 35 knots or 40 miles per hour. And this again indicates that this is a tropical storm, but it is still poorly organized at this particular moment. 
So what's going to be happening over the next several days is that, again, we have a storm that is actually sitting down here. And you can kind of see it's still elongated, and, and that is confirmed, again, by the recon plane. But the system is still very elongated, and it's going to take just a little bit of time still to kind of get this thing organizing. So I would not expect to see any significant intensification in organization during the next several hours or so. However, if we jump out to the 200 millibar wind, and this is a wind here in the upper part of the atmosphere, we notice that the wind shear right now over top of the storm isn't particularly high. We have this broad upper level low over Mexico, and again, the flow around it now is becoming, uh, the flow around Nicholas is becoming relatively light, and we can see that that light flow aloft actually continues at least for the next 12 to 24 hours or so before conditions start to deteriorate. And we can see that by this time, the cyclone here by early tomorrow morning is actually displaced over the upper level anticyclone. It's displaced away from it. And this would now mean that shear can start picking up once again. And we can see that by the time the storm actually arrives here near the Texas coastline, this is a very strong vortex, but now is feeling more of that southwesterly shear aloft because this is now a displaced upper level anticyclone. Now, uh, similar to Ida, this displaced location of the storm and upper level uh, anticyclone will create shear. In the case of Ida, it was not enough to weaken it, but here in the case of Nicholas, Nicholas won't be that strong. And 990 is a strong vortex, but it's not strong enough to fight off uh, some of that shear in a more robust way. And we can actually, again, kind of take a look at that here. And we can see that, again, the storm here by this time is now beginning to encounter a lot more of the shear. And if we take a look here at the precipitation field, this is the relative humidity in the middle part of the atmosphere. Now, what we notice is that we have a pretty coherent uh, vortex right now with deep moisture pretty much surrounding on all sides. But we notice that there is a lot of dry air beginning to kind of get punched in on this western and southern side. And most of the rainfall and dark green, which indicates high moisture content, is all the way over into Louisiana and even Florida at this time. And eventually the vortex remains, again, it remains coherent, but it remains uh, almost now becoming decoupled. You can see that most of the southern and western side of the circulation is devoid of much of the convection and this would be kind of a comma head structure that we would probably see here uh, in the visible satellite imagery. And the rainfall extends all the way out here to portions of Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Florida. So the, there is going to be a wide range of impacts from the storm. Storm, uh, storm surge amounts are expected to be right around 2 to 4 feet above normally dry ground with rainfall amounts that could exceed 15 to 20 inches in spots. This is a dangerous situation. And just because this may not be another Ida where you get winds of 150, 155 miles per hour, uh, you will still get some gusty winds. You know, hurricane force winds are not out of the question here. Uh, but that storm surge and, again, more importantly, that rainfall is going to be the biggest problem as we progress through the next several days. Now, looking back over the Atlantic here, we have two other systems that we are really keeping our eye on at the moment. We have a tropical wave here near the Bahamas and a new tropical wave that is emerging off of the coast of Africa. Uh, this is old Invest Area 93L, no longer expected to be a threat to develop. And we have a subtropical system that could develop near the Azor Islands. Reminds me much like Alpha of last year. Uh, but again, this too, I'm not really deeply concerned about during the next several days. So what's happening here? Well, we can see on the GFS forecast, this is the 850 millibar vorticity. But we'll jump up to the 200 millibar wind here to kind of show something. And this is the uh, upper level low that's kind of been sitting here during the last several days uh, over the region of the Bahamas. And this is now beginning to back towards the west-northwest here as we progress through the next several days. And that's going to allow for some increased organization in convection. And again, the upper level pattern never really becomes that favorable. We can see that, again, there might be an area where the upper level environment is just semi-conducive for some development. But again, this displaced anticyclone here and the ridging that it's going to cause 
Uh, plus, this upper level low here is going to be inducing a lot of shear over top of the storm. And that really doesn't change all that much. And we never really get a coherent, strong vortex to end up forming during the next several days. Now, whatever does end up happening here, we can take a look here at the 500 millibar height anomalies. Whatever does happen will likely be carried northward. And again, that is in part because we will have a trough that is digging in here, eroding the ridge in the middle part of the atmosphere. And because we won't have a very strong storm, you can actually take a look at the 850 millibar vorticity. And we notice that the ridge outline really extends right about here. So the storm is just basically following the lip of this ridge in the low levels around here. And this would likely, again, just kind of remain a weak vortex at that. Although impacts to the Carolinas are certainly possible within the next four to five days or so. Now, after this time, we are also watching a new tropical wave, and this is the one emerging off of Africa. Now, the models today haven't been in good agreement on whether or not this actually develops or not. Now, assuming that it does develop, and it is probable that this would go on to develop based on NHC current odds, we will have to watch. There is a building ridge of high pressure in here by day five, and this wave will be somewhere in here within the next five days or so. Now, initially, this ridge would be strong enough to force a storm to stay generally towards the west here. Now, the sooner this develops, the quicker it goes out to sea, in, or the more potential it has to go out to sea. We noticed one of the reasons why is because there's going to be a weakness in this ridge here because of this upper-level trough approaching uh, within just beyond the five-day realm, and this would turn a storm that is pretty strong quickly further towards the north and west here. There is a ridge that is over the Canadian Maritimes, but that is also shifting and weakening. We get a big trough here to kind of dig in, and you can just kind of see the upper-level pattern through the next several weeks or so. And again, this really is kind of some somewhat of something that would support the storms that quickly turn out to sea. Although, again, if we get a storm to wait further to development, maybe somewhere out in this region, it would likely have a harder time being steered up and away out to sea at this point. Now, the European forecast, again, is somewhat similar. Again, we can kind of see that the storm takes kind of a long time to develop. And uh, by the end of the forecast period, it's, no, it's not really anything significant. But this wave energy is making its way all the way over to the Bahamas. Now, Again, there's a lot of uncertainties in this forecast, and if we look here at the GFS ensembles here, we can actually take a look at where the GFS ensembles think a storm could be. And if we go out here, this is just about by 162 hours from now, there's a wide range of possibilities where a storm could be. And even though, again, no development is shown on both of the operational runs of the GFS and Euro, the GFS ensembles are quite insistent that there will be a storm somewhere in this vicinity. Now, all of these red numbers here are areas where we could see a tropical storm or depression be. And again, some members have it getting pretty close here to Barbados and the Lesser Antilles, a good clustering here that is far away and a lot of clustering that is still near and just south of the Cabo Verde Islands. Again, the upper level environment at this time, 200 millibar wind, again, would show that we have this tropical upper tropospheric trough right here. And this tut would be responsible for creating shear over top of any storm that ends up developing. So if we get a storm that is somewhere right in here, it would likely be sheared away. But if a storm can develop more so under this upper level anticyclone, we may have a storm that is much stronger and turns out to sea a little bit quicker. 500 millibar height anomalies here, just real quick again, does show this ridging here, but a big caveat is how strong is this ridging really? There is a natural weakness here in this ridge, and again, a stronger storm will tend just naturally by beta drift to move more towards the north and west here. So there is a lot of complexities in this forecast. Again, the European is much of the same here. The EPS ensembles, 500 millibar height anomalies, Again, kind of much of the same here in its overall consensus as well. So we will have a lot to watch over the next several weeks, really. Uh, it does look like it is going to be a busy couple of weeks. First up here with Nicholas approaching the Texas coastline. All right. With that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali.
I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.